David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today, I have for you another limited edition pen. Uh, it's been out for a couple of weeks, and folks have been snatching these up. Uh, several retailers are already out of stock, so it might be a bit challenging to find, but they're still out there. What is this pen? Uh, it is from Narwhal, and it is the latest release in their Schuylkill line, and it is called the Porpita. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Narwhal Schuylkill Porpita, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Narwhal for providing this pen for review. Uh, in regard to Narwhal, something to be on the lookout for next week. Uh, through their Instagram page in celebration of St. Patrick's Day this year, they will be giving away one of their green models of their original fountain pen. At least I believe that's the pen they're going to be giving away. But check out their Instagram page for that upcoming giveaway. Okay, on to the pen at hand. It arrives in this simple box. Um, I like the Narwhal logo and the uh, gradient colors that they use. And then inside we have just a little use and care guide and then we have the pen. Um, they also include a, uh, a little wrench tool which is helpful for performing maintenance on the pen. And that pen is the Narwhal Schuylkill Porpita. Now there's a lot going on in that name. Uh, Schuylkill is the name of a river near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Porpita is a sea creature. Uh, many of Narwhal's pens or color variations are named after ocean animals. A Porpita is similar to a Portuguese man of war. Something interesting about them is that they are both male and female so that they could reproduce by themselves. It has an interesting color palette of deep blues and browns and aspects of translucency. Uh, they've translated that palette over to this pen well, I feel. Um, you can see here uh, in this resin that it is swirled with an interesting combination of blue and brown with a little bit of chatoyance. And there are even parts of this material that are more translucent. Um, with this material, each of these pens will be slightly different. Um, and I like the way it interprets the colors of the namesake of this pen. Uh, speaking of uh, sea creatures, if you have Netflix, I recommend checking out a documentary called My Octopus Teacher. Uh, it's all about a South African gentleman and his relationship he builds with an octopus and the neighboring sea life. I found it to be enjoyable to watch. Um, as I mentioned, this is a limited edition. I, I believe it's a run of 800. Uh, let's take a look at the cap. On the end, there is a gold circular insert, which is slightly rounded. Um, all of the trim on this model is gold color. Uh, then we have the clip. Um, it is sturdy and it operates well. Um, I like that the bi-level design of this clip is a bit unique. I don't think I've seen that exact design on another pen, so that's nice. The cap angles up slightly until about the last three quarters of an inch where it straightens out. Um, there is no cap band or exterior branding on this pen. Um, there is a medium sized step down to the barrel, which begins with a decent sized ink window. It's large enough to get a good look at your ink situation, and I like that it's visible when the pen is capped. Um, I don't feel that having that window there really breaks up the flow of the design. The barrel tapers down at a very slight angle until we get to a rounded metal band signifying the beginning of the piston knob. And then the end of the piston knob is rounded. The cap twists off with two full rotations. Um, I was looking back at my notes and the original Schuylkill I reviewed only took about a rotation and a quarter so they might have lengthened the thread slightly on this model. Um, underneath we have a stainless steel number six nib. Uh, this is an in-house nib. They manufacture their nibs themselves. Um, I've always liked the Narwhal logo on this nib. I believe this one is stamped rather than engraved. And the nib is available in either fine or medium. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a slight flare, then angles up at a steady pace until it reaches the acrylic cap threads, which I don't find to be sharp or uncomfortable if your grip should rest on them. Uh, the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted, which is a good thing because I wouldn't recommend posting this pen. While the cap does indeed post, and it posts securely, um, it really doesn't post that deeply, so it adds a considerable amount of length to this pen. 
Um, even though the cap and barrel are the exact same weight, I really don't feel it backweights the pen or throws off the balance. The reason I wouldn't recommend posting this is that the cap posts directly on the piston knob. If you should inadvertently twist the cap while this is posted or twist it while you're uncapping, uh, then you are engaging the piston, which could lead to some unintended ink exposure. So yes, uh, I would not recommend posting this pen. From all the talk about the piston knob, you probably have deduced that this is a piston filler. The piston operates easily and smoothly. Uh, the mechanism feels solid and it provides for a decent ink capacity. The Narwhal Schuylkill Porpita is a limited edition of 800 units. And as I mentioned up top, some retailers have already sold out of their allotment. So you might need to search around a bit in order to find one with some available stock. Um, something nice is that this limited edition sells for the same price as the standard Schuylkill models, which is $55. I feel that's a very reasonable price for what you receive with this pen. Um, for the special edition, I really like the unique look of this resin, and I feel it fits in well with the theme of this pen. Um, you'll see in the upcoming writing sample, but their in-house nib performs well, and overall, the, uh, the pen is built to last. I would hope that one day they'd address the fact that the pen posts on the piston knob. That's been a nagging issue for Narwhal since they first launched this pen in 2019, this model. Uh, but yes, this pen is worth checking out, if you can find it. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. some size comparisons for the Narwhal Schuylkill Porpita. Um, here it is with a original Narwhal piston filler and here it is with a Sailor Compass and then here it is with a Cross Peerless 125. This is the Darth Vader model. I always felt that the Cross Peerless 125 is a, an underrated pen. And then in regard to three pens that you might be seeing coming up on upcoming reviews, um, here it is with a Tabaldi Bononia Bora Bora. Uh, and then here it is with a Kasama Tala, which is a smaller model than the one I showed previously. And finally, here we have a Leonardo Momento Zero Pura, and this is the anthrac Anthracite Gray. Um, so it has the gray and then it has a black nib on there. I just think this is a very, very sharp looking pen and I'm very much looking forward to uh, getting to show you the whole collection of that. In regard to uncapped comparisons, here it is with the original Narwhal demonstrator and here it is with the Peerless 125. And here it is with the Leonardo Momento Zero Pura. So here we go with the writing sample for the Narwhal. And this is the Schuylkill, which is S-C-H-U-Y-L-K-I-L-L. And then Porpita, which is P-O-R-P-I-T-A. This is a medium stainless steel nib. Um, and as I said before, they make these nibs in-house and it is fairly smooth. Uh, and the ink that I'm using today is Monteverdi. And this is Blue Velvet Cake. This is what the ink looks like. I wanted to kind of match the uh, blue of this pen. Um, this is what it looks like in regard to kind of a, a deeper blue that's a little more vibrant, the Farney's American Blue. And then finally, just because it was named fairly similar, uh, this is Bluegrass Velvet as opposed to Blue Velvet Cake from Ferris Whale Press. And this one is more of a, a green blue. This is what the bottle looks like. This was part of uh, Monteverde's Sweet Life series. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, it was a, a series of, it was either 10 or 12 inks, and there was a, a high proportion of those that I really care for. So it's something worth checking out.
And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I will say, uh, as I mentioned previously, this in-house nib for Narwhal is very smooth. It's glassy smooth. Um, you're, not getting, you're not getting lots of line variation out of here, uh, but I do find that the ink flow is very generous for a medium nib. In regard to some reverse writing, it's very smooth reverse writing and lays down an extra, extra fine line. And then in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up just fine. As I mentioned, this nib writes very smoothly. If you're one of those people that really value smoothness above everything else in regard to those nibs, uh, then this is something that you might want to take a closer look at. But um, I think overall, let's get a closer look at that material again. I think this material just looks really sharp. And so I think that especially for the $55 price, um, this is a winner of a pen. So if you're looking for something in this price range, then I think it's well worth searching for. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.